When I started learning Japanese, the thought of being able to play games in the language seemed like an impossible task, but as soon as I had enough vocab and grammar under my belt, I took the plunge and I never looked back. It's been an invaluable tool to fitting in some extra practice every time I pick up the controller. But what if you're just starting out and don't know any of the necessary vocabulary? What if you don't know any Japanese at all, but you want to start playing through some of your favorite wacky Japanese games? Well, sit tight and I will share with you my essential list of Japanese gaming words and phrases. Let's start with the easy stuff. When you fire up most games, you'll be met with a menu something like this. The following are some common words you encounter at the start of every game. Start, hajime or starto. Load, loado. Continue, suzukeru. Settings, sette. Options, option. What you may have noticed there is that quite a few of these words sound like English. With games being such an international media, Usually, a lot of basics are written out in these loan words instead of their Japanese equivalent. Good for us, right? So how about ways to play? Depending on the game, you'll have a few different options. Single player, hitori de, or two player, futari de. Multiplayer, mina de. Online, internetto de, or more simply, online. Local connection, lokaru tsushin. As you can see, that last one was a combination of the loan word lokaru and the Japanese word for communication, tsushin. When you start any game, it will inevitably begin with a loading screen where you will probably see this phrase. This kanji can be pronounced as chu, and when placed after certain verbs, denotes that the action is in progress. The phrase lodo chu then can be quickly deduced as to mean loading. After you've progressed somewhat through the game, you're probably going to need to save. Simple enough. Save in Japanese is seibu, and saving is, that's right, you guessed it, seibu chu. On a tangent to that is the word autosave, which is a good one to remember, as this can sometimes save you from losing hours of progress in those more punishing games. If you're playing any kind of RPG or simulation game, then you might have the opportunity to create your own character. This may just be entering your name or customizing your entire look. Either way, here's a few basics to help you get through the menu. Name, Namae. Gender, for males, Danse, or females, Jose. Skin color, Hada no Iro. Not to be confused with Hada Iro, which is literally a color like red or blue. Hairstyle, Kamigata. Hair color, Kami no Iro, or Keiro. Accessories, So Shokuhin. Okay, great, so now you're in the game and you want to learn the basic controls. Let's take a look at some of the words for performing common actions with the aid of everyone's favorite Italian plumber. To look around, Mimoasu. To walk, Aruku. To run, Hashiru. To duck or crouch, Shagamu. To jump, Jampu. To swim, Oyogu. To spin, mawasu. To backflip, bakchu. To pick up, motsu. And to throw, nageru. In games that utilize many items, you'll no doubt need to equip them, or perhaps there are vehicles or weapons you can also utilize. For those situations, we have the following words. To equip or select, erabu. To ride, noru. This can be used for vehicles that are both living or inanimate. To get off, oriru. To aim, narao. To shoot, hanatsu. To attack, kogeki or kogeki suru. At some point, I would imagine you're going to need to take a break, which is a great excuse to head into the menu, or easily convert it into Japanese as menu. It's literally the same word. Depending on the genre of the game you're playing, you'll probably see a few different options here. So let's take a look at a mixed selection. Replay, Repre. Map, Map. To return, Modoru. To quit, Yameru. To open a side menu or text panel, you might see the word Hiraku. And to close it again, Tojiru. 
Just like on the total menu, you'll usually have options listed on the in-game menu too. Here's a list of terms you might spot whilst you're rummaging around in there. For adjusting different audio levels, you might have music, ongaku, effects, koka on, environmental effects, kankyo on, voice, koe. You might also see the word borum bolted onto the end of these words in certain games, but there's no bonus points for guessing what that means. If not borum, then you might see the Japanese version of the word onryo. Other options might include brightness, akarusa, language, gengo, audio language, onsei gengo, subtitles, jimaku, and controller vibration, shindo. Many games have inventories that you'll quickly fill up with all kinds of useless crap, but it's nonetheless important to take stock of what you have. In English, we usually just write a number before or after a noun to display the quantity, but in Japanese, there are counters for specific types of objects, like four animals, yon hiki, 500 sheets of paper, go hyakumai, or two pieces of sushi, nikan. Trying to remember all of these counters is, in my opinion, one of the worst parts about studying Japanese. But thankfully, when playing games, you can probably get away with just learning one. This. This kanji is pronounced ko, and is a counter used for just general things, so it tends to be favoured in games if there is any kind of counter at all. But as numbers are universal, a lot of times you just have the quantity displayed without the specific counter kanji applied. With the numbers out of the way, let's take a look at a few things that you're likely to find in a generic video game inventory. Items. Item. Sword. Katana will usually refer to a Japanese style sword, and Ken will be used for more general types. Shield, Tate. Bow, Yumi. Arrow, Ya. Combining the two into Yumiya will quite sensibly give you the phrase bow and arrow. Amulet, Ofuda. Armor, Yoroi. Ring, Yubiwa. And Potion, Potion. Lastly, games usually give feedback in the form of numbers to inform the player as to how well they're doing, how much money, health or energy they've got, or generally whether or not they're just not very good at the game. All this info is often displayed on a HUD, or heads-up display, much like this one. Thankfully, most of these are pretty obvious, but let's take a look around anyway. Things like HP, MP or XP are often written in English characters, so you'll know them straight away. A lot of games have made up currencies, which again might be written in English or Katakana, so it's hard to know the word before you play the game. More realistic titles might use the Japanese yen, which is pronounced en, not yen, when used in Japanese. For example, 100 yen would be hyaku en, not hyaku yen. The other general term for money is okane. If you have a special meter, it might be written as specialu. In shooting games, your ammo might be displayed as danyaku, but it's probably just going to be pictures of bullets. Position, in a race for example, is denoted with the suffix kanji i. First place is ichi i, second place ni i, so on and so forth. And time is either taimu or jikan. Obviously time is a universal format that we can all understand, but there are many contexts in which the value of time can be understood. Besides the previously mentioned jikan, which is a very general term for time itself, there exist other more specific terms too. Time remaining, nokori jikan. Time limit, kigen. Within the time limit, kigen nai. Record time, kiroku taimu. Elapsed time, keika jikan. And for rhythm games, you might need the word timing, timingu. As an enormous asterisk on the end of this video, I would like to point out that all of these words may come in handy. I can't guarantee that every game is going to use all the same words for all the same things. Just like in English, there are many ways in Japanese to say even the most basic things. With that being said though, if I did miss something in this video that you believe to be essential to gaming in Japanese, then please head down to the comment section right now and leave an informative description for all your fellow language learners. If you want to study any of these words further, then you'll find an entire list of all the words featured in this video down in the description box below. To stay up to date with Kantan Japan, then subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon for instant updates on future videos, and please like this video if you found it to be helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.